Welcome to CFT 195's online lecture series. Today is a two-part video series on coloring wood. The first part, we're going to talk about mordant, specifically ebonizing mordant. Now mordant, meaning to bite or to make stronger, basically is an ion that pulls a dye onto the surface of the material that you're using. In our case, it's wood. And mordant also enhances the color of the dye, whether it be a synthetic or a natural dye. There are tons of different types of mordants that you can use uh, for uh, enhancing the coloring of wood. You can use tea, you can use iron, you can use aluminum, you can use copper. There's tons of different recipes that you can find online for, to make different types of mordants. But in class, we specifically uh, work with ebonizing mordant. Ebonizing mordant is made from iron oxide and acetic acid. Iron oxide, basically rust, is mixed with acetic acid, distilled white vinegar. The uh, iron oxide will dissolve into the distilled white vinegar and will give you an ebonizing mordant. Now how uh, we make ebonizing mordant in class is we use steel wool. But if you have anything that's rusty at home in your shop, you can just throw it in some um, white vinegar and you'll make, a, um, you'll make your own ebonizing mordant. In class, we use Libron steel wool. You end up with a more pure um, mordant with less particles, and really there's no filtration of your mordant system, of the mordant that you make. If you use a lower grade steel wool, for example, the steel wool that you find in Home Depot, or any major home improvement store, you end up with more residue in your ebonizing mordant, and you end up having, you'll have to strain it. Same goes as if you were to use rusty nails or anything rusty around the house. If you look in front of me, you'll see two different jars of ebonizing mordant. So now the jar on my left, your right, you'll see is kind of more uniform in color and just a nice even color all around. But the jar on my right, your left, you'll see that there is you know, there's a residue on the glass and there's a residue on the top of the glass and it, it's not as uniform in color. The jar, this jar right here on my right, your left, was made with a uh, steel wool that you find from a major home improvement store. The oops, ebonizing mordant on my left, your right, was made with Libron steel wool. And you can see the difference between the two of them and the quality between the two of them. Even though it's called ebonizing mordant, mordant, ebonizing mordant doesn't always ebonize the wood. For example, it will turn walnut black, but it turns maple silver. And I'll demonstrate that for you guys in just a few minutes. But remember, I'll not remember because I haven't told you yet. One important thing is mordant will raise the grain. So you do want to make sure that you raise the grain prior to the application of mordant on your piece. Mordant is also, it, it only penetrates the surface, so mordant can be sanded off if you, do, if you don't like the effects of the mordant. One other important thing about mordant is mordant will bleed. So it is important to use a seal coat uh, between mordant and your top coat. And we will talk about seal coats more in the second video during the stain and dye application process. So let's actually show you how to make some mordant. It's pretty simple. I'm going to move everything out of the way. So it's all over here on the side. We're going to need our distilled vinegar, Liberon steel wool. We'll put the cruddy stuff to the side. We're going to need a jar. Extremely important. You want to make sure that you have holes in the top of your jar. So all I did was basically I took a finishing nail and I just punctured holes into the lid of the, this jar. First off, 
I'm going to put on my safety goggles. I'm going to put on my gloves. Take my white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, just pour it in. A specific amount is not necessary. I have my steel wool. I'm going to take maybe about 18 inches of steel wool because this comes in a big old roll. And I'm going to stick it in there. And then I'm going to let it dissolve. And it's going to take roughly about seven days for this to dissolve. I'm actually going to just apply a little, throw in a little bit more distilled white vinegar. Um, it's going to take about seven days for this to dissolve, and then you'll end up with your Morden solution. Now, the reason why you put holes into the lid is when the steel wool is dissolving into the, uh, into the white vinegar, there are gases that are released. And if you, do, if you don't uh, put these air holes in the top of your container, your, your, your jar is going to explode, basically. There was a student long before I was in Palomar that the, uh, Michelle, the former finishing instructor, used to t um, he would always tell this story. He decided he was going to make his own mordant. He made his mordant, had his jar, put his steel wool in, applied his vinegar, closed it up, but forgot to put holes in the lid of his jar. He had his jar in a bag and set this bag down in his living room that had white furniture, white carpets, and white walls. The mordant exploded. And remember, this is used to enhance dyes. So this mordant, you cannot get this mordant out. So he basically ended up with black all over his walls, his furniture, and his carpet. Never got it out. That's a true story. So it's important that you make the holes and allow the gases in the mordant to escape. And another common question you're going to get is how, what is the shelf life of mordant? This right here is two years old. This right here might even be three years old. So there really is no shelf life of Morden. It'll last forever, basically. It may eventually start to dissolve, but it's going to last a long time. So let's go into the application process of Morden. So here we have a piece of maple. If you remember before when I talked about how not all wood is ebonized by ebonizing mordant, maple turns silver. So I'm going to demonstrate what mordant does to silver. You can, um, same application process for pretty much shellac, you can rag it on or you can brush it on. We typically just rag it on. So all you do, just rag it on, just like that. Turn it around, a little more, make sure you get all of it. We're going to let that dry, but as you can see, it's kind of starting to develop a little bit of a silver tone to it. Now let's look at a piece of walnut. Ignore the red writing on the board. Uh, I am still going to use the same rag, not a big deal, and we'll apply it to some walnut. Now you can see right here, I always go with the grain by the way, I was just trying to create a straight line right there. You can see right here, I'm going to cover out the rub out board on this how it's starting to turn it black. And that is basically all that Morden is. Morden just reacts with the tannins in the wood. 
and that's the color that it creates. Well, ebonizing mordant, I should say, reacts with all mordant reacts with the tannins in the wood. But ebonizing mordant in particular, this is what it does to your walnut, and this is what it does to your maple. And that is ebonizing mordant. Hope you enjoyed the video.